In the framework of the linear dynamical system, we try to estimate the hidden continuous process that underlies a data set. However, we could also think of this as a problem that the brain needs to solve. When it gets noisy measurements from its sensory receptors and needs to, to make sense of those measurements to form a decision on how to act. So it needs to extract information about the outside world, which is hidden to it, and that causes the activation of the sensory receptors. So now let's assume we have some data measurements Y. Um, and this could be a high dimensional, but, um, high dimensional data set. But in order to be able to visualize the data, we're going to basically pick out two dimensions here. And as you see, this data um, is collected over time. Our aim is to find a latent process that underlies our measured data. Typically, this would have a lower dimension D, but for visualization, we will plot it in the same dimensions, in the same two dimensions. We assume now a very specific structure for this latent process. Specifically, we assume that the latent structure can be expressed by a continuous variable S that propagates through time T with some temporal smoothness, which is expressed by the transition matrix F and some Gaussian noise, zeta, which has um, some covariance Q. This latent variable um, S drives the observed or measured data Y, which has its own Gaussian noise term, eta, with its own covariance R. We dis see this also in the graphical model. We have this latent state that directly drives what we measure um, in, in the data. There are two important features of linear dynamical systems that make them easy to work with. First, the latent S and the observed Y are both normally distributed. And because the transformation in time between um, latent states and from latent to observed are linear, the joint distribution is also normally distributed. And second, just as in the hidden Markov model, we have this Markovian structure where the latent the time point T is conditionally independent of all the previous time points given its direct predecessor. We're not going to go into the mathematical details here, but you can learn more about it in the appendix of the notebook. As a first exercise, we will implement such a linear dynamical system and sample from it. So we're creating our own simulated data. For visualization purposes, we will limit ourselves to a system with a two-dimensional latent and a two-dimensional observed variable. Once you implemented the sampling, you should have obtained something like this here in the graph. We have in green a latent trajectory and in black the data points that reflect this trajectory but are noisy. The exact values for the third sample given a random seed of zero should be 2.129 for the first dimension and minus 0.08 for the second dimension. <laughs> 